Okay, this is the uh, December 16th, 2014 uh, Auburn School Master Plan uh, team, and I guess we'll start by having the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The uh, meeting is being taped. Is there anyone else taping it? There are none. Any uh, citizen comments? There are no citizen comments. Um, we have the meeting, uh, the minutes from September 16th. Uh, anyone like to make any changes or comments, ads, deletes? If not, uh, Make a motion that we accept the minutes as written. Second. A motion and seconded. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It is a vote. <coughs> okay. Um, I guess what we want to do, we've, we've been uh, really the last meeting that we, we had a lot to discuss was during the summer, and in that time um, we chose the architect who is Nault Architects of Worcester, and we've been working with them, uh, Mr. Noah, Mr. Fahey, and myself, um, to do the, um, uh, bring the project uh, out to bid. And uh, just to review the overall schedule, I, I put a copy in it, I think it's the third uh, thing in the packet. Um, we're pretty much where we thought we would be with this. Um, We've gone through, we had the subcommittee decide what schools were going to, uh, were going to be repurposed, made that decision, um, come up with the preliminary budgets and then updated the budget. We did the funding repurpose at the uh, town meeting last spring and we're right at the uh, end of 14 now where the construction documents are almost ready. Uh, we expect it to be out to bid in January and construction in the summer. So we're pretty much where we thought we were going to be a year and a half ago. Um, the design document status, there are, there are two drawings here and, and <coughs> what we've tried to do um, to make sure that it's within the funds that are available is to put it out as a base bid and then with actually three alternates. We showed two here, but there is a third one I'll go over in a minute. And uh, just to go over the, the whole project, um, the top sheet A2 is actually the ground floor, um, which includes the kitchen. And what we've done is to add a couple of restrooms out in the dining area for the kids so that if they're in the cafeteria, they don't need to get down long corridors or back up on other floors to get to the restrooms. Um, those restrooms were a little bit bigger in the initial drawings and we've shrunk them down a little bit um, to make everything fit and also to, to keep it within budget. In the uh, kitchen area, um, you can, it's, it's, it's a very small drawing, but you can see the, at the bottom of that red outlined area, you see a coiling security grill. What we've done is opened up that wall for a 14 split foot uh, space so that the whole kitchen gets opened up and then the, the kids will go in the two doors on either end as they do now and then back out through the salad bar which is that item number 10 and then uh, pick up the two cash registers which are the two item number sevens. Um, so that whole flow works pretty good. The dishwashing area pretty, stays pretty much as it is uh, in all probability, there will be a new dishwasher that goes <coughs> in there. And then in the center, the kind of the center island there, there's, there's new uh, uh, stoves and cooking uh, areas. And there's a new uh, exhaust fan hood that goes there. And then that will go out to the side of the building, up the side of the building, and onto the roof. And then the, in the upper part of that red area, the... Uh, coolers and the freezers which are now out in the parking lot will get moved inside the building and along with a dry storage area. So that's pretty much the kitchen renovation. There'll be a small office in there too. 
and then a, a new set of double doors so the deliveries can come in. And it, it really seems like it works pretty well. Um, new ceilings, new lights in that area, in, in the entire kitchen area. That's the, what we call the base bid work with uh, one other piece that I'll explain to you when we get to the next drawing. Um, there are two main alternates. One is for the work that's on the first floor, but the alternate number two is within the blue area that you see behind the kitchen. And what that is is a teacher workroom area and a teacher lounge uh, dining area. Um, as an alternate, as the base part of the base bed, that area will get enclosed and studded off and everything. It won't get finished unless we take alternate two, which we fully expect to do. But we're just trying to give ourselves a little bit of uh, leeway if the numbers are tight. So, and if, if we chose not to take alternate two, then that room would be an empty shell with the bathroom in it. And at some point down the road, it would get finished in. Um, again, we don't anticipate that's the case. We we're just trying to give ourselves some, some leeway. We don't let teachers lounge around, do we? Well, you can see in, in the in the up there, it's probably a poor choice of words. In the upper right hand corner, it shows what it would look like finished. Um, there'll be the workroom area, and then there'll be tables in there with the uh, uh, small bathroom and a small uh, kitchenette area. <coughs> And if you go to the other drawing, A5, there is one more piece on this drawing that gets included in the base bid work with the kitchen, and that's the area way over on the, on the left, which is the toilet room coming off the vestibule. So as part of the base bid, that toilet room will get uh, made handicap accessible. and. Uh, will be treated as, Joe, I believe, a unisex? Correct. <clears throat> and you can see what it looks like on the, uh, on the lower left-hand corner there. Then alternate one, which again, we fully expect to take, but giving ourselves some room in case the numbers are tight. Alternate one is renovation of the entire uh, existing office area. Mm -hmm. And the, t the existing area is, up, is shown on the top of the drawing, the new area is shown on the bottom. And it, there were several, several uh, renditions of how this plan was going to work. Initially, the nurses were going to stay in that general office area where they are now. But by moving them over into the, what I'll call the west end of the library, uh, it makes it much simpler to get uh, plumbing to them, uh, to that, that new uh, toilet area. So the general office will get fit up. There'll be two small offices that will be used as some sort of guidance or other uh, temporary type offices. And the principal's office will be on the right, as you see it, with a small existing bathroom that won't change. Then when you go into the library, the end of the library will get uh, built out as the nurses area. Uh, the waiting area where the, the kids can lie down if they're not feeling well, and then a new toilet. And then the IT room, which is in that current waiting area, will get flipped over into the uh, small area beside it. So it seems like it works out pretty good. And uh, uh, so what that's all done is to give us some options as the um, as the project goes out to bid. The base area will get done first. Alternate uh, one, which is the upper area, would get added in if there is still money available, which we fully expect to happen. Alternate two uh, would be the fit up of the teacher's area. And then alternate three is just changing the kitchen floor from epoxy paint to a quartz epoxy. So, um, and again, where, where that goes, we don't know. But um, what we've tried to do is to give ourselves some ability to maneuver here if, if we need to financially. Um, um, from a budget standpoint, we've spent about 800,000 from the million eight and 
the architect is expecting this to come in somewhere around 800,000 for the whole package. So we think we're okay. Um, with the alternatives, Rick? With the alternatives. Um, again, you know, as we found, as we saw with the packing light, you don't know until you actually see the numbers, but um, they've done a pretty conclusive, uh, comprehensive uh, estimate. It seems like it, it is workable. Um, other things that aren't a part of this contract and this bid um, are work that Joe and I and, and Joe have been working on on the side and it's a little bit up in the air but we're, we're trying to change the lockers from lockers to some sort of cubby or shelving with hooks um, more so than the uh, lockers that were used for the middle school. At the same time, we've been looking in each of the classrooms to change the existing track boards to marker boards and tack boards. And we're looking at that <clears throat> two different ways. Um, one is a film that would go over the board, and that board right behind you is actually one that was just done as a, demo, as a uh, demonstration model. Uh, it's a thin film that's put on. Sure seems like it, it's a nice system. Or you can write on it with erasable markers. Yeah, it's a it's a whiteboard, but it's okay. it's a and film. You guys can project on it, mm -hmm. yep. and it it also can be done as a magnetic board too. They put a, a magnetic film it. beneath it. So that's one way, one thing that we're looking at. Uh, another is um, to put new boards on the existing frames with uh, quarter inch marker boards and tack boards. And we have one room that we're going to do room one twelve over the holidays to see how that comes out. And uh, it appears this is a little bit less money, but until we really look at it, it's hard to say, so. Do we still have smart boards in there? We uh, do. Through the cheer we have them in every classroom. Okay, oh, yeah. Yeah. okay. in every classroom. Okay. Yes. Wow, okay, yeah. great. Yeah. If I could ask a question? Sure. Um, are the boards gonna be a little too high for some of the students? <coughs> um, we'll have to measure it. There is, yeah. there is a height requirement. Um, that we uh, that they did go over with us mm -hmm. off the top of my head. I don't know what it is. Yeah. But there is a but that one looks okay. Yeah, but this mm -hmm. was an uh, elementary. This school. This was an school. elementary right. school. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. I'm just remembering when we went there for sixth grade and we got transferred over. All of a sudden, we're like, oh, these boards are kind of high, but we adapted. But I don't know about grades <coughs> three, four, and five. One of the they need to be lower for the like, especially like the third graders. I don't know. Yeah, we'll check the height. Okay. There, is, there, is, uh, there is a height requirement that they recommend. Just bring in basketball players. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Showing my life. We're I'm trying to go. I can't reach anything. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to reuse the existing frames, if at all possible, mm -hmm. in that location. I that. Yeah. Because to start popping them off gets involved for a a few different reasons, right. and, and we're trying to stay away from that if we can. So, Certainly. Yeah. But it won't do us much good if they're too happy. Yeah. yeah. So the third thing that we're looking at, um, and we had initially thought um, each of the classrooms would get new doors and lock sets. The doors are in pretty good shape. So mm -hmm. at this point, uh, Joe put the lock sets out to bid and has already purchased them. And uh, the functions, Joe? They're, um, there'll be a school lockdown function. Uh, similar to what we have at the high school, yep. and there'll be a key per floor. Um, there'll be a, um, a lockdown key. Again, it replicates what we did at the high school. So Which, how does that work? <coughs> Someone can do one and they're all locked? or Correct. You'll have okay. a lockdown key. So in other words, if you're in the hallway and, you need to, and the building does go into lockdown, you'll be able to take your lockdown key and go into the, uh, the bathroom, mm -hmm. and, and you'll be able to lock down the bathroom where, where anyone else wouldn't be able to use the bathroom key. Oh, uh, in each. Each, each floor will have, they all have their own lockdown key. So uh, uh, any teacher will be able to lock down from inside the building, but not from outside. Mm -hmm. oh, sounds good. Each classroom gets locked each individually. Though. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, we picked up some money there and, and really looking at the doors, it didn't really seem they needed to be replaced. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're, we're in pretty good shape there. So. 
That sort of brings us to the schedule. Um, at this point, uh, the the uh, advertisement for the bids will be in the central register this week. Correct. Twenty will be posted now, but it will be um, it will be shown on the twenty fourth. On the twenty fourth, yeah. correct. And the plans will be available on the twenty fourth for uh, the contract. As we expect the pre bid walkthrough to be on the sixth. The filed sub bids will be on the 14th, and the general bids will be on the 21st of January. So, um, come the 21st of January, we should know where we are. Um, and then at that point, you know, we can we can sort of figure out how we're going to approach the whole thing and, and who we're working with. The last page in the in the packets. Um, is a tentative draft of how we think it would work. And the attempt would be, it's, a, it's about a 14 week project for the whole thing. Um, we're thinking that the last week of school, uh, we would be able to <coughs> clear the general office out and do the abatement uh, that we have to do in there on the floor tile. Uh, and also at that point we would remove the old kitchen equipment. Um, June 8th is the last day for students, June 9th, last day for teachers. So the, the contractor could mobilize those days. And we're anticipating June 10th, uh, if there are no snow days, June 10th we would turn it over to them. And if there's a couple of days, then that would obviously get pushed out a little bit. So um, that leaves week three through 13, about 10 weeks for construction. And there are a couple of milestones that we need to have done as it works along. Uh, there's a, an exterior grease trap. There's actually two grease traps that are in the kitchen, one inside, one outside in the parking lot. So that's going to have to be installed by mid-July so that once that's done, we can come back, pulverize, and pave the lower parking lot to, meet the, uh, uh, to match the upper parking lot that we did last summer. And then what, we'd, what we're looking for is to get the nurses area turned over early in August, um, the kitchen equipment ready for installation on August 10th, and then uh, set up and testing of it towards the last two weeks in August. So, um, you know, it, it's a tight schedule, but it seems, it seems doable. So um, it's about where we are. We, we think we're okay budget-wise. We think we're okay time-wise. That's good. You did a good job with the high yeah. school, a million and a half and under, and we completed it at half schedule. Well, I don't think we're going to be, uh, well, we're, not gonna have, we're not going to have a lot of money left over here. <laughs> but I, it, it, you know, it's, it's a workable situation. We've, we've still got a few balls that we're juggling, and, and, uh, and once we know what that, general contract and number is, then we can, you know, then we can really make a, a, a decision how we're going to wrap the thing up. Um, architect has been good. He's been easy to work with. Uh, did he do the original building? He did um, the addition, addition on the building. Yep. Yep. But he's done a lot of other work in town, too, and they, they've just been really good to work with. So. Um, I guess the uh, the next item was the offline buildings. Uh, I don't know if we want to, if there's anything that we need to be doing now with them or. There really is to the chair. Um, we had a meeting recently with um, Town Manager Jacobson and Mr. Kazanovich. So we've put together what we believe are the steps required. She's currently running them by town council to be sure that those will be followed. I'll share those with school committee. Um, but depending on, I think everyone's been made aware that she's formed a elementary reuse um, subcommittee advisory group and I believe that group is almost ready to be set on its way to, to begin its work. Uh, she was waiting for some additional people to uh, apply. So the timeline is hopefully them, for them to begin their work in January and get some information. They're going to keep us surprised as they go forward um, but hopefully by 
mid to late spring, they'll have some guidance to be able to share back uh, with the Board of Selectmen. But basically, the first step will be for school committee to deem them surplus and turn them back to the town. Yep. One of the challenges will be, um, in, as we actually spoke earlier today about it as well, whether there may be some public forums around it to get a broader scope of input from people in the community. Um, you know, if there's one track to go, if anything's going to be sold, if it's going to be retained by the town, there are other steps to be followed. But that's all in process. And any any money that's being spent is part of the school budget that you're working on now? We actually, um, so we had set aside originally $62,200 to maintain those and heat them. Um, we just got a price that I'll share with the school committee on January 7th. We had budgeted for $4 a gallon. We got a bid price of $2.28 a gallon wow. for oil. So wow. that saves considerable oh, oh, oh. dollars. Um, but it is part of our discussion. The school committee um, is of the belief, and I would agree that while there is a cost to maintain those, if the school department turns them over, they need to be reflected some way, but not necessarily from the school's budget. Yeah. So I um, have had that discussion with um, the town manager and, and CFO. So um, that will go forward, I believe, in that direction from yep. the school committee's perspective. Yep. We've got money set aside. Any other comments or? Are you going to be using those portable classrooms still? Through the year we are. We have those um, still slated uh, to be used. We'll actually be doing some updating of those as well. Questions, comments, any? When they're going to start tearing the tower down. Not my job. That's in the, that's in the <laughs> permit. <laughs> and the guy that's in charge of the planning board is a pain in the gazingi. <laughs> um, so I guess that's where we are now. The the um, We probably want to schedule the January meeting for right after the 21st, I would say. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what that's for. I think the 21st is a Wednesday. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 21st is a Wednesday. <coughs> so if we had it the 27th, does that work? Sure. Work for everyone? And that still gives us February, March, April, and May. Uh, for the contract to uh, mobilize them. Should be in good shape. Um, so we're looking at what you say, the 21st? 27th? 27th, yeah. We'll open the bids on Tuesday? the 21st. Yeah, what day is that? Uh, it's a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. 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 Any other comments? Or? Nope. New business? Anyone? Nope. Everything's looking really good. Yeah, it seems like it's. Uh, it seems like it's going to work. It's quick, but it will. Uh, there's going to be a lot going on from May through mm. October of next year. That's for sure. Or May through so. September. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you it'd be May through October. <laughs> <laughs> But no, we, we, you know, this is a doable job, and, and uh, West Street is in great shape, yeah. the new building. Yeah, so, yeah it is. You know, it's in great shape. Um, great shape. Looks very nice, too. Yeah, yeah it, it does. Nice, sure does. Nice yeah. job. Yep. yep. So. Very happy. If there's nothing else, entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. So moved. Mm -hmm. Second. 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 Second.